Can you, can you please uh, introduce yeah, yourself? Fuck me up. <laughs> can you please uh, introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are and plug or promote anything you'd like. Hey, 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 my name's Tina Firefly. You guys might have seen me on the Dyko Deck Live channel. I sometimes do reacts with those guys. We have lots of fun. Um, I'm front a band called Beautiful Skeletons. We are all over the place. We are alt metal, whatever the fuck that means. We make great music. Check it out, beautifulskeletons.com. Beautiful, beautiful Skeletons band on YouTube. Where there's a place for streaming, believe me, there's a Beautiful Skeletons song somewhere there. So you guys definitely check us out. How did you How did you originally link up with uh, Alan and the boys regarding uh, doing reactions with them? Oh, I was hoping you would ask me that because it's, it's actually pretty funny. So uh, we we did uh, we had some people kind of shop our single over at the Dykojek channel, and they did a react to it and they fucking hated it. Like Eric and Alan both hate, they were like, oh, this song is terrible. The singer is terrible. Like, we just hate everything about this song. And uh, I thought that was hilarious. So I'm, I'm definitely not the kind of person that shies away from that kind of shit. So I went into their comments and I was like, you know, uh, I'm glad you guys did the react even if you didn't like it. So thanks for doing that. And they responded and they were like, we should have you on. And then kind of just went from there. So... <laughs> I don't think they really expected me to to jump on with them and start bantering, and I just don't shy away from shit like that. So, magic happened. Very cool. That is awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, how long has the band been together? Four years. Four years. And you have, were you making? Have you been in like in and out of projects prior to this? Like you've been making oh, yeah, music yeah, most yeah. of your career. Yeah, I'd say I, um, I've literally been in everything from jazz to death metal. Do everything you, do, you, uh, do you play instruments as well besides vocals mm, i mean i play piano but i prefer just to be on vocals i mean i've i've done both keys and vocals and honestly like if you've seen me on stage i just i really love jumping around just getting out there and interacting and i can't do that if i'm tied down to a keyboard so these days i just do vocals gotcha and you you know eric from somewhere else correct no. Oh, you you said no. you said Not Eric. Oh, you threw me off. Eric. Yeah. Oh, okay, another. Okay, different Eric. I got you. I got you. But <laughs> yes. my 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 co-host today is Eric, aka Spaz. Spaz, do you have a question for Tina before we play some music? I actually had a question, but now that you said death metal, can you just give me like a death metal scream? I just want. I love screams. Oh. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> I knew you guys were gonna do that. I'd no, like. My, my my real question was uh, I, I did look at your website and did a little bit of research once uh, BG asked me to be a co-host and your genre is female fronted. I, I love that because that's like empowerment. But like, why would you say that as a female fronted band? Just you're a band like mm -hmm. why that? It's, it's, it's controversial, right? Because it depends on what side of the fence you're on. Some girls are like, well, Female fronted is not a genre. Uh, agreed, it's it's not a genre. It's a descriptor sentence. It's not. There's no music that's just female fronted. Um, but it is not the. It's not properly represented. So for me, using the descriptor female fronted brings that out into the forefront because as many uh, wonderful fucking alt metal bands as there are that are male fronted, which we don't say right. That there's very not very many that are female fronted or if you want to get really nitty gritty, like Asian female fronted or, I mean, you could really qualify it with anything. It's a preference in my opinion. Uh, I know some bands who don't like that qualifier and that's fine for them. Um, but for us, that's something that we like to put out there. It's, yeah. It is interesting that you bring that up because I've never thought about it before. Male fronted band. I've never, yeah. I've never seen that. And then you bring up a good point. So it does kind of make you go, oh, okay, well I'm gonna click this. Like just by that one line, I'm gonna click this. Right. Just right. like I'm gonna if look. Better representation, then we don't need qualifiers like that, right? Then it would just be all. It's an alt metal band. But until there's better representation, why not use the opportunity to sort of point out, like, hey, this is something that we should be looking more for. What is the suffering about? What does it mean to you? This was a pandemic song. I mean, everybody suffers from anxiety and depression and all that bullshit. 
and I don't know if you guys have kids or wives or anything like that, but I have three kids and a husband. And when the pandemic happened, like, I mean, it hit hard across all levels of my home life. And this song is pretty much about that. It's about like, uh, you know, everybody talked about like, oh, I'm going to lose my job. And, you know, there were so many bad things that happened during that time. But if you were a musician, it was like you couldn't even complain about the fact that venues were shutting down. You could all your gigs got canceled. I knew fellow musicians who were stranded in different parts of the world because their tours got canceled. So this really is an ode to that. So it's really about like the depression and anxiety that happened during the pandemic period. Let's check it out. If you guys are feeling it, please support Beautiful Skeleton. Slap a sub right on there. Hit that bell like I am right now so I don't miss nothing. By the way, this is a song, by the way, that Eric and Alan from the Daiko Deck channel hated. They fucking hated this song. They thought it was terrible. They didn't like my voice. They didn't like the recording. So just putting it out there because I think it's hilarious. Please continue. <laughs> Let's do our best to not hate on it right now. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, Jason sort of came out of the woodwork and we were like, where the fuck have you been? He's a great fit. Hell yeah. I was hiding. Excellent. Hiding. <laughs> well, once, what is once lost is now found. We appreciate you uh, jumping in, hanging with us. Tina, who is who is an artist that, that you have not had the opportunity to collab with? Doesn't matter if they're superstars or not. This Everyone's going to say yes, but you can only have one person on, as a feature on a track. Who would you pick? Fucking shit, that's a question. Um... You know, you're gonna laugh, but I, I've actually always wanted to collab with Violet Orlandi. I mean, she's not huge, huge, but I love her covers. I love her interpretation of uh, songs, and I thought, like, it'd be really fucking cool if her and I could ever collab. There's a couple artists you mentioned today that I'm not familiar with. Viol Violet Orlandi, is that you said? Vi Violet, yeah, Violet Orlandi. Interesting. Jason, if you were to pick, same question, who, who would you think would be a good fit for a feature on a Beautiful Skeletons track? Oh, that's a question I haven't even thought of yet. That's like, that's not, I'm not even, that's not even in my wheelhouse at this point. I'm just, uh, come on, Jason, just pick one. Just pick one. Just I think it would be Carrie, Carrie King, if it was anybody. Nice. Mm. Very okay. nice. I know it's kind of old school, but that's kind of me. So I like it. Spaz, do you have a, another question for them? I'm going to try one more time in the spirit of way trivia. I need to look Yeah, up. I do. I mean, I, as a drummer, I mean, I always rag on my guitarist and bass player, but how in the hell did you guys get hooked up with Ingve? That's <laughs> pretty impressive. That's dope. I mean, what was it, seven days? Uh, you guys were direct support or main support. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was two weeks. You know, I mean, that's a great start for a first tour. Um, wait, that was your first? Wait, I'm sorry. That was our first no. tour. Yeah. First no. tour with Ingve. First tour. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, impressive. we opened up the year uh, doing the Wacken battle for Portland and then just kind of had like this great run. And then we opened for Saliva. And then right after Saliva was the two week run as direct support for Ingve, which was an experience for sure. Um, we've just had like, we're probably one of the most driven <laughs> set of individuals ever. And uh, we're just, we're just hell bent on world domination. It'll happen. It will. So, uh so as the the female fronted um, band member, like who makes all the calls or like who calls the shots? Is it a collective or is it pretty much, hey, I, I'm the vocalist. I, I don't like this or I, I, I want this. Or I, you know what I mean? How, how do you guys come yeah. up with these badass songs collectively? So um, thankfully, because I've been in lots of other bands where there's been conflict about, you know, creative direction. Um, thankfully, there's not that conflict ever with Beautiful Skeletons. Uh, Anar, who's our guitarist, who's not in the stream right now, he's like, uh, he's just always coming up with these most amazing riffs. So he starts it with a riff and then he sends it to me or one of the other band members and we either go like, oh yeah, that really like inspires me. And then the instruments will get together and create a structure. And then when I join the mix at practice, by that point I've heard it a couple times and I have some ideas. And it's like the moment that we all jam together on that one particular song, boom, it just comes together. Um, and then I'm pretty much exclusively writing all lyrics and melodies. Everybody just, they're really good at what they do. And there's only the four of us. So as far as creative direction goes, everybody has really good ideas for their instrument and it just comes together. Awesome. Hell yeah. 
And it, it's totally obvious in your music too. So, I mean, you, you can just feel, you know, I've been a musician for many, many, many years and it, it's finally like it clicks when it clicks, you know, it, it's for sure. It, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This for sure is going to stump you, Tina. Are you ready? Oh, There's God. no way you're getting this one. There's no way. Tina, I'm going to pull out the jalapeno hot sauce for you. Okay? Oh, shit. Will you snort it? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Th oh three people taste the cake from the river spirit. I need you to name all three people that taste the cake. Oh, man. Three people that taste the cake. Chihiro, or Sen, and damn it, what's his fucking name? The dragon dude, I can't remember his name. And oh man, I think you got me. I don't know who that third person is. Tina's just trying to get me to suck on this bottle is what she's trying yeah, to do. Yeah, can you just put it in your mouth, please? Gotcha, you bitch. Uh, all right. Mm. This is for you. This is for beautiful skeletons, all right? Thank you. That is Do officially oh, a stump. Shit. The answer is Sen, Haku, and No Face. No Face! That was the third person. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we, we got you. Uh, I'm wow. proud of myself. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. That's, a right That's a lot. That's a lot. That's heavy. Woo. Wow! The whole bottle! Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! That's crazy. Well, uh, what is what is <laughs> what does uh, Beautiful Skeletons have lined up in 2023 that we're allowed to know about? Yeah, see, that's the thing. The allowed to I know, know I know. One. There's stuff that you well, can't tell us, but give us a little, yeah. little tidbits. Okay, little tidbit. We'll be up in Seattle, Tacoma, Everett, Longview, Idaho. Um, we are booked out until the end of the year. We have two upcoming tours. The whole year's already booked? The whole year's already booked. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. You guys don't even know. We, we're we like, believe me, 2023 is our year. Uh, but Goodbye and Fuck You is our next single. We call it Gaffy. <laughs> Goodbye and Fuck You. <laughs> and uh, that shit is going to blow up. Um, it's already recorded. It'll probably get released to Spotify. Where I'm hoping we can get it out on Valentine's Day because it would be the ultimate fuck you, like anti-Valentine's Day song ever. Uh, because it's a breakup song. So goodbye and fuck you. That's on the radar for next year. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to announce our April and May tour uh, pretty soon with some hey, big Hey, Tina, bands. you guys need to make it to like NorCal, Sacramento, San Francisco. Area. And SoCal, April. please. And SoCal, please. Yeah, so, April. You know. We'll be in your neck of the woods in April, buddy. In NorCal or SoCal? Yes, Both. Sweet. It's the best you answer we could have got. It's the best answer we could have got right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. I'll be yeah, we have a then. bunch of tour uh, stops in California, and uh, we'll I'm sure we'll put all that info out there. The ink's not dry on the deal yet, but yeah, we'll be all over the place in April. I'll I understand. Shoot you a message on the side. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, let's see, Jason. If you let's just say all of a sudden, giant label comes along, everyone in the band gets a five million dollar signing bonus. Jason, you're balling out today. <laughs> what what toy are you buying for yourself? Obviously, you're t you're t you got some money for your family. Don't worry about that. I'm just talking about specifically you. These toys are for you, sir. They're probably boomsticks. Brooms? Boom sticks. I think it's said broomsticks. Broom. <laughs> yeah. I was like, damn, that's expensive well, broom. that big of a Harry Potter fan, but uh, yeah. So. <laughs> for sure. And, and, a, and a couple new bases, you know. I have I, a question for I, I'm not even sure what I know what a boomstick is. I'm, I'm trying to keep it... Uh, another easy. base is what you mean. Yeah, yeah, sure. Another base and a couple of rifles and a couple of... Yeah. Hell. Oh! They're okay. not in California, JB. Yeah. I said JB. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jason. Um, do you get picked on that you're a bass player? Like, you know, you're just the bass player. Do they ever give you those little jokes and little <laughs> digs? No. <laughs> No, not yet, but bets are coming now. It's, it's coming, not Tina. Yet. It's coming. <laughs> it's <fine. laughs> Tina, we'll say same question. What, what would you spend some money on to just splurge for yourself? Dude, I would I would have the best music video ever. Who would, be, would, who, who would direct $5 it? $5 million on our, oh, I, whoever wants, I'd like, I don't know. 
whoever whoever's available, I'd just get anybody and everybody in, in my music video, and we would just have, like, crazy stunts and special effects, and everything will be on fire and exploding, and people will be, I don't know. It would be crazy. I'm still tripping on the fact that you guys are booked all the way through 2023. Like, I don't I'm know saying. another artist. And we talk to six or seven artists a week, every single week. No one's ever given me that. First of all, I'm very I'm proud of you guys. And how does that <laughs> feel to literally be completely booked already through 2020? Like, from a just personal, humble answer. Like, yeah. how does that feel? Well, you know, um, I don't know that I'd accept anything less. Um than that we that's we just, a badass answer <laughs> we just we grind and um we're we're big believers in in hard you know work hard play hard and uh we follow our instinct and it's really not led us astray so far and uh it's sometimes really difficult to follow your instinct to take that leap of faith to take the gamble of of this kind of thing because there's no guarantees with anything um i actually got fired for going on tour this last summer with Ingbe and I had a choice. I could say, fuck off. I'm $20,000 and like, fuck it. I'm just, I'm going to have to cancel and pull out and keep my job. Or I could sc scrape and scrap and like, just pull myself up by my boat straps and say, there is a reason why we're getting pulled in this direction. And I just need to follow that. And so as difficult as that was, I had the support of my husband and pretty much everybody who was like, there's no fucking way that we're going to not let you guys go on that tour. So getting, knowing that I was going to get fired for that and taking the leap anyway was a huge thing for me because obviously I, stability is important and you know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. So once that happened, I knew it was like, okay, now we're on a one-way track and like, I am going to put every single particle of my being into doing this the right way, use every resource, grind every day. And you know what? It's paid off so far. This is music hey, to my ears. I'm liking everything I'm hearing. Tina, uh, real, real fast, BG, I'm sorry. Um, you, you and Jason, um, was this like a lifelong dream to be a musician and just playing a show, whether it's with somebody famous or just being a local act? Like from, from when you were a baby, like, did you always have a microphone? Did you always have a bass or did you have an instrument hit a, hit the drums or, or something like why now, you know, cause we're all kind of, yeah. we're not spring chickens, but right. um, it's happening. And how, how did that transform into current day? Jason, I'll let you answer first. Go for it. Bud. For me, it's been lifelong. Uh, I've found old pictures of me when I was four packing around my dad's acoustic guitar and stuff. Um, I started on guitar, or started on drums in fifth grade, and then um, and then it was seventh grade. Of course, I like the guitar better because, you know, girls, right? <laughs> no, no girls. <laughs> and then I, I didn't start That's playing wrong. bass until, like, probably like 10 or 12 years ago. But I'd always been a guitar player before, and I took a break, a little hiatus, and I came back in as a guitar player, or as a bass player, and I, I got good at it. I can guess. can your guitar player play bass? Like, is there an opportunity yeah. maybe in the set yeah. somewhere where you guys, like, do a little swap? Probably. No. <laughs> oh, Jason's like... I'm not, I'm not that good on guitar. Oh, okay. Good too many years. It just looks cool visually to do, like, the little the, the swap. Uh, from, like, nobody wants to jump on the drums? The, somebody's got to jump on the drums. So I mean, I, I see Tina, been, like... Yeah, no, I... <laughs> no, I can't. Everybody rotate one position. So. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I've seen other bands do that, and I've I've been in a couple projects where that's that's happened. Honestly, I mean, it's all right, but I mean, there's only four of us, and depending on how big of a stage it is, like it might be kind of a pain in the ass to have to rotate all over the place. I will tell you though that the guys, bass and guitar, they like fuck with each other during the set. Like they'll hit each other's strings and shit. And um, at some point, you know, like the drummer like lost a stick and the bassist picked up the stick and was like smacking his guitar. So there's lots of interaction like that. Awesome. Um, but yeah, you don't want me on the drums or anywhere near any other instrument. Like I'm just allowed to hold the mic and that's about it. Heard. <laughs> Microphone only heard. <laughs> we, only have, we only have time for a couple more questions, but uh, I want to ask a serious one. Of all your interactions with other other artists in the music industry, is there any piece of advice that anyone's ever shared with you? that just resonated and you're willing to share with us or 
something that you did maybe wasn't in skeletons maybe it was in a prior uh, a prior band something that was like a terrible mistake you guys made that uh you don't want a starting up band to make you know what yeah and um obviously there's a lot of i've been in and out of bands for so long it's there's a lot of history there but i'm going to tell you this because the first thing that comes to my mind is our manager paul crosby who was the uh, drummer for saliva one of the first things he said to us when we signed a contract with him was it's very expensive to break a band but it is a small business and if you grind this is all roi right it's all return on investment and we all know that we know it's expensive we know that if you're trying to break out of just the, like your local level it's it's gonna cost money and that is what it is um so you can either fight the grind or you can figure out how to play the game and get creative. And I really appreciated him being upfront about that and not being like, yeah, yeah, you know, I got you. We're going to make you a superstar and all this crap. No, he, he gives it to us straight. And that's really important to me. Um, and he's right. Breaking a band is fucking expensive. It is expensive and it is a business. And um, you got to get to the point where you're not just sinking money into it, but you're actually making money and you're sustaining growth. That's a great answer. So, uh, BG, before we leave, can I ask uh, one final question? Yeah, absolutely. You can have the last one. All right. Um, screw the money. You know, <laughs> let, let, let's just say whether we were poor or millionaires, would you still do music? It doesn't matter. You know, you do it. We like to think we do it for the fans, but we do have some internal uh, love that we do. We play music for ourselves, but more importantly, we do it for the fans. But would you still do it? If you were dirt, broke, cheap, like you live in a, a tent, I mean, would you yep. still continue to play music for the masses? My soul would wither and die if I didn't, Eric. <laughs> I would wither and die. I wouldn't That's be beautiful. me. I wouldn't be happy. I would be miserable. It doesn't matter what my bank account status is, whether I'm $50,000 overdrafted or I've got 50000 in the green. It doesn't matter. Because what connects us all, right, is this music. It's it, I'm going to do it regardless, even if that's from, like, a fucking soapbox in Portland somewhere in front of a Voodoo Donuts. It doesn't matter. Voodoo Donuts. Those are good, too. Those are, those are awesome. yummy. Cereal Donuts, man. <laughs> I know. That's awesome. It's a great so answer. Awesome uh, uh, really good advice, too. And I love the fact that, you, like you mentioned, that uh, your manager just gives it to you straight, doesn't hold anything back. Just a lot of times people are sold sold a dream and uh, – He's he's presented a dream, but also giving you a path on how to achieve it, which is which is a, a cool way, I guess you'd say, of wording it. Um, yeah. Tina, Jason, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Please don't be strangers. This is a lot of fun. I'm I'm glad I was able to stump you, Tina, at least once on trivia today. I I, I take pride <laughs> I take pride me. in the stumps, <laughs> but uh, you guys Tina, are awesome. I'm gonna, this bottle. I'm gonna I'm gonna get your address. <laughs> we'll, we'll hook up on Do the it. side. I'm gonna send you this bottle because this shit was. Yes. <laughs> Blech. It was like a blast. Like, like, well, thank you for taking the uh, for me. I appreciate that. <laughs> you guys are fucking awesome, and I'm a huge. Fan. Sorry, BG. I'm a huge fan of your guys <laughs> for sure. This is awesome. Thank this you, awesome. thank you so much, and thank you, BG, for having us on here. I appreciate that. It's my pleasure. Please keep us informed about the NorCal and SoCal dates and all that stuff when it's announced. Uh, just tag yeah. us at something or, or message us apostle so we can do our best to to please come out and uh, support you guys. That'd be awesome. And yeah. uh, other than that, we look forward to the single coming out Valentine's Day, yeah, which would be night. awesome. Fuck you. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> beautiful skeletons. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks, guys. You guys have an awesome day. Thank you.